So this weekend we're visiting my parents in Kenosha, Wisconsin, where I spent my uh, teenage years. And after we moved here to the subdivision that they live in now, another subdivision started going up next to it. And the name of that subdivision was Walnut Grove. Now at the time that name meant absolutely nothing to me because I knew nothing about trees, what a grove was or anything like that. But now, <laughs> a few years later, uh, now that I actually know things about trees, I realized how unoriginal that name was because they named it after literally a grove of walnut trees. So at the time I knew nothing about trees, walnut trees, or any other kind of trees. How to identify anything or even what walnut wood even looked like. But if I just look through here at the woods, that's a walnut tree, that's walnut, that's walnut. Pretty much every deciduous tree here is walnut. And then there's some, um, some kind of pine trees over there as well. And there's some other mixed trees in here, but mostly everything is all walnut trees. So the walnut leaf itself is a series of leaflets that make up the entire leaf. So the whole leaf is actually back here where it connects with the tree, and this is all technically the leaf. The number of leaflets will vary depending on the tree itself. This one here has 17 leaflets on one leaf. The leaflets themselves have a very fine serration around the edge, and the bark tends to be fairly coarse but tight with kind of an X-type pattern, and it kind of looks like ash bark, but the walnut bark tends to be a little more on the brown black side, whereas ash is a little more gray, or light gray kind of white. So another way to identify a walnut tree is if you break open a branch, and you look in the center there into the pith, the walnut tree is going to have a spongy pith. So it's going to look all kind of striated and compartmentalized almost in there. So I'm not really sure how big this area is, probably a couple acres. It's not super big, it turns into a park now. So there is a path here that this used to be trees. So this was bulldozed at some point. But let's head in here and take a look and see what we can find. Found this little trail thing here. It rained yesterday, so it's kind of wet. So it's currently late May, so there's no walnuts on the tree, but walnuts themselves are going to be the easiest way to identify a walnut tree because they're very obvious. Um, they'll usually be out there in the late summer, late to midsummer, maybe August, late August once they're coming off the tree. They look like green golf balls. <laughs> they're pretty hard, and as they sit on the ground for a while, they'll start to rot and they'll start turning black. And uh, the fruit on the outside will get kind of, you know, rotten and gross which will reveal eventually the husked walnut on the inside, which would look like this. And if you crack it open, there's the actual walnut meat, I guess. So since it's so early in the season, the trees actually haven't even finished leafing out yet. They do have their flowers on there, waiting to be pollinated at this point. Now what I find really interesting about this grove is the fact that all the biggest walnut trees, you know, these ones here, they're not really that big. This is maybe I don't know, 14 inches in diameter. This one here is maybe closer to 16 or so. They're all about that size, the biggest ones. So it kind of makes you wonder how they all got here in the first place since there's no really big diversity as far as trees older than that goes. So where was the first one? So I'm guessing that well, there was one walnut tree here at some point that was the only walnut tree and maybe the walnut got here, you know, by a squirrel leaving it here or something. And that tree grew and has since died, but it was the mother tree of all of these, I guess. That's my only theory on that one because there is literally nothing bigger than 18 inches here. So there's a lot of little stuff. So you can see that there's a lot of new trees coming up from the, I guess, the older trees that are here right now. So just looking through this one little area here, that's a walnut tree. That one's a walnut tree back there. Uh, here, these two here, um, that one there's walnut as well. There's a small one right here. So I mean there's a lot of them in this one little area and there's not a whole lot of other stuff. So now one common question that I usually get is you know, how do you learn to identify species of trees? And the best answer I have for that is just practice. So something that I didn't really become aware of until I got into woodworking was the variety of trees around me. So what I did or what I continue to do is look for species of trees and try to identify what they are. 
Now there's a great website on the Arbor Day website. There's a great tool on the Arbor Day website that allows you to walk through like based off of the leaves and the bud structure of the tree and I'll walk you through and you can figure out what kind of tree you're looking at and you can use that if you don't quite get it the first time to cross-reference against like pictures on Google to figure out what kind of tree you have and then the more trees you identify even within that exact same species the easier it is for you to walk up to a tree and just know what it is like this walnut tree here so what I find really interesting is what a difference it makes uh, geographically and regionally to where you are for identifying trees because there is a huge variety and it doesn't take that long to get away from your area of comfort as far as identifying trees go to somewhere where you have no idea. So right now I'm about 300 miles away from where I live and it's actually somewhat difficult for me to identify everything around here. For instance this thing right here I've never seen this before either because I ever had to identify it before Maybe it doesn't grow where I am, who knows? I'm not really even sure what that is. So even though I don't know what all the trees are, I'm not totally lost walking around. Um, this is some kind of white oak, so I guess I'm kind of lost. I'm not sure exactly what kind of white oak that is. Might be a swamp oak, but it's in the white oak family. And then this giant tree right here, that's a white oak as well. Um, if I look up at the leaves, they're pretty similar to this one here. The white oak has this lobe structure. And on white oak, the tips are going to be rounded. On red oak, they're going to be pointed. And if you look back here, this is a cherry tree. You can tell that just by the bark. It has a very distinctive bark. So there is a cherry tree in bloom. And if we pan down, you can see that flaky, almost bluish bark. Right there. I'm pretty sure most people that walk their dogs through here don't really care about the fact that these are all walnut trees but the woodworker in me is pretty excited here's a little baby one a little baby walnut tree see the bark is just starting to deepen with those grooves very young this is only a few years old but you know that's a little walnut tree here there it's another one here it's a cherry box elder so here's a look at that trail kind of from the road we were in there looking around and this is all all of these are all walnut through here and there's the houses and there's my truck so now i'm back in the shop and i thought to wrap things up we can take a look at some examples of walnut in lumber form so again here's the bark from the walnut tree it's coarse but tight and has that characteristic x kind of pattern and then flipping over to the inside on the outside of the tree is the sapwood. It's really white in walnut. And then the characteristic walnut, the heartwood, is that kind of chocolate brown. In this case, it's more of a purple tone, but the heartwood could have all kinds of different colors in it. Uh, reds and sometimes some greens. It's really beautiful wood. The sapwood here is the living part of the tree. And then the heartwood is dead. It is a nutrient storage for the tree, as well as provides structure to hold the tree up. But mostly when you see walnut, it'll be like this without any sapwood on there. And that's a pretty characteristic walnut board. Now in the video, I couldn't really see that spongy pith because I didn't want to break or damage a larger limb of that tree to make it really obvious to see on camera. So here is an example of that so you can see that a little bit better. So if you were to take a branch and just kind of split it along its length, this is kind of what you would see. The center of that branch, the pith, is going to be kind of void, but it's also going to have all these little ridges through there. But that's one of the characteristics of walnut. It's a really defined pith that's kind of spongy, and it's got a bit of a void to it. So I hope this inspires you to get out of your shop and spend some time out in nature identifying some trees. For all you know, your favorite wood to work with is just growing right out in your backyard. <laughs> so thanks as always for watching, and until next time, happy woodworking.